Have you ever wondered why God created music? I want to show you from the scripture that music is spiritual. I'm also going to show you how the Holy Spirit uses music. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to encourage you to subscribe to us if you're watching us on YouTube. And when you do subscribe, click that notification bell so that you can receive alerts whenever we release new content. And for all those other platforms, remember to follow us wherever you're watching us. God always creates with purpose. God always creates with intention. There is nothing that God has created that lacks a purpose, and music is no different. Music, in fact, is spiritual. Job chapter 38, verses 4 through 7 say, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. The morning stars is speaking of the angels. The angels were singing God's praises when he was creating the world. So, if music came before the material world, then music is spiritual in nature. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15 says, Well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will also sing words I understand. If music wasn't spiritual, it wouldn't be possible to sing in the Spirit. The Bible even describes something called spiritual songs in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. You see, the thing about music is it's a very powerful tool. And music, in fact, causes your soul to be opened. It causes you to be more susceptible. It causes you to be more easily influenced while you're listening to music. So imagine this. This is why I caution people when they listen to secular music because the music moves you emotionally and mentally and that music puts you in a state that opens the soul. It makes you more vulnerable to whatever the message is that's being carried on that music. So imagine that you're putting yourself in this vulnerable state, opening the soul, and then you're allowing someone to speak lyrics or sing lyrics into your soul in that moment. This is why we must be careful with the kind of music that we listen to because music is spiritual in nature. Also, consider the fact that music is a heightened form of expression, which is why it's used in worship. Psalm chapter 150 says this in verses 1 through 6, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise His unequaled greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with the lyre and harp. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So music is not only spiritual. Music is something that can be used by the Holy Spirit because it is spiritual in nature. Now, really, the Holy Spirit can use whatever He wants to use, including things in the material world that aren't exactly completely spiritual in nature. But when it comes to music, the Holy Spirit can actually use music to enhance ministry. Elisha requested a harp to accompany him while he prophesied. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15 says, Now bring me someone who can play the harp. While the harp was being played, the power of the Lord came upon Elisha. Think about the fact that Elisha the prophet requested a harp before he began to prophesy. Now, could he have prophesied without the harp? Could he have prophesied without the music? Absolutely. In fact, we see that mentioned several times in the account of Elisha's life. 
But in this particular instance, he called for music because he knew that there was something about the music that would aid him as he prophesied. A band of prophets used their instruments to aid them as they prophesied. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 says this, When you arrive at Gibeah of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the place of worship. They will be playing a harp, a tambourine, a flute, and a lyre, and they will be prophesying. So these prophets formed a band, began to play, and that music enhanced the prophetic words that they were speaking. The prophetic ministry, as you read the Old Testament, you'll find the prophetic ministry and music go hand in hand quite often. And there is something about music. There is something about music that's so powerful that it aids ministry. It aids the message. It aids the prophetic gift. There's a mystery to it. And I can't really explain to you how all of the dynamics work. But I do know this. As I read scriptures like these, it becomes obvious to me that the Holy Spirit, in fact, uses music. So that's the biblical support for that truth. It should be noted that God wants us to use this gift of music, even in times that we're ministering. In fact, if you've ever come to one of our miracle services, you'll notice that the music really plays a key role as the miracles manifest. Now, I am by no means saying that the miracles couldn't happen without the music. But there's something about music that brings people to a state of faith. There's something about the music that helps to prepare the hearts of God's people as they receive of the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you how many times it's happened where I'm praying for someone who's believing for a miracle and I'm believing for God to heal them and the Holy Spirit will speak to my heart and He'll put a song in my spirit. He'll put a sound in my spirit. And I'll turn and I'll instruct the worship team to play a certain song in a certain way. And the moment the worship team begins to play that certain song in that certain way, power begins to flow. And the people that stand before me when they're receiving prayer begin to tremble under God's power. Now again, am I saying that it's the music that does this all on its own? By no means. But I would liken it to a similar thing, such as how we use oil. Think about how the scripture describes in James that we are to, when laying hands on the sick, use oil. Now, we know the oil doesn't have any power unto itself, but paired with the oil, our acts of faith produce the miraculous. In a similar but not exact way, music carries something on it. The waves of that music do something to the atmosphere. There's something about music that connects heaven to earth. There's something about music that shifts spiritual dynamics. There's something about music that aids in the overtaking of spiritual authority. In fact, this is the case that we see when David played for Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23, the scripture says, And whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David would play the harp. Then Saul would feel better, and the tormenting spirit would go away. Now, it's not as if demons dislike music in general. In fact, there are certain types of music that invite demonic influence and give demonic powers places of authority. So we know that in the general sense, demons don't just leave whenever music is being played. So in 1 Samuel 16, 23, it wasn't that the tormenting spirit went away simply because there was music being played. But the tormenting spirit went away because the music that was being played was anointed. Music can be anointed. Music can carry a weight of God's touch. You know, there's such a thing as a tangible reality to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, meaning there's a physical manifestation. There's there's something that's actually carried upon it. And the same is true of music. It can be anointed. It can carry God's power on it. And there's something about when you connect with anointed music, it does something in the realm of the spirit. Music is a means of permeating the atmosphere. Something, as I said, is carried upon the waves. No, it's not the music. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And there are certain types of songs and sounds 
that attract the Holy Spirit. Going back to what I was explaining earlier, we see this happen in our services. In fact, I've seen it happen to where if a worship team plays something that's slightly off, and I'm not talking about off-key, I'm talking about off of what the flow of the Spirit is, it disrupts the dynamics in the room. I'll never forget when I was attending a Bible conference in Southern California, and the Holy Spirit was moving. The worship team was playing this one song, and they were singing it, the people of God were singing it, and it wasn't just emotion or hype. You could sense that there was a real presence. The glory of God had manifested in that place. And there was a flow to that moment. There was an atmosphere in that place. Sure enough, the worship leader turned, spoke to someone, and they very abruptly shifted the flow of the service. They changed the song. When they did that and they took it in a different direction, suddenly that atmosphere dissipated. That weight lifted. And I remember standing there watching the worship team kind of fumble to try to get back to that flow again. And I recognized something in that moment, that our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit even applies to the type of music we listen to. Because the Holy Spirit can anoint music. So we see in Scripture that music is spiritual. Music can be used to enhance ministry. And music can be anointed. I pray that we would allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in our choices of music, and I pray that the Holy Spirit would anoint the godly music that we use for ministry and for worship. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would begin to cause us to see all of the ways that you move. Precious Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gift of music. Give us discernment, Lord. Let us be sensitive to the Holy Spirit that we may be guided in our music choices and that we may enter deeper places to the worship that you've anointed. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. And I truly believe this. There's someone watching me right now God's called you to worship ministry. And even as you're hearing me, the Holy Spirit is inspiring you to pull sounds out of heaven. And that is it for the lesson. I want to give you now a question for conversation. Has the Holy Spirit ever used music to touch your life? Tell me about it in the comments. Now I'm going to read comments from a previous video titled, It's Time to Stop Limiting God, I Am the Resurrection and the Life. Emily Laramore writes, Thank you, Brother David, for this series. It was so deep and powerful. The Holy Spirit always brings new revelation every time I watch any of your content. Hikmatu Kamara writes, I am blessed to be a part of this great family. Your messages always encourage and ignite in me a fresh desire to do the will of God. May Jehovah continue to bless you and use you mightily. Thank you so much. Bible verse of the day writes, Thank you, Pastor. I am so glad that I found your ministry. Your ministry is helping me grow closer to the Lord and desire the continual communion of the Holy Spirit more than ever before. Your messages stir my faith. I also love the worship by Stephen. Bianca writes, I never saw this Bible story as clearly as I see it now. The way it was explained deeply relates to how people like me live in this world, especially in times of trial. May God give us the faith to live in a way that glorifies Him. Glory to God for this powerful message. And the final comment I'll read from this video comes from Jacqueline Parmer Cortez, who writes, Thank you and your entire team for all that you do to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout these media forums. God bless. I want to encourage you with a portion of scripture found in Mark chapter 12. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had 
to live on. When it comes to our giving, God looks at how we give in proportion to what we have. Whether you have much or you have little, you can please the Lord in your giving by giving in proportion to what you have. Give generously, give sacrificially, and help us continue doing what we're doing for the Lord. Help this ministry continue to expand and to grow and to reach souls and to bring healing to the nations. Help us continue to take the power of the Holy Ghost all around the world. This ministry is growing. This ministry is effective. This ministry is good soil. So give a one-time gift or become a monthly supporter by going to davidhernandezministries.com. For one-time gifts, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. To become a monthly supporter, and that's key, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. If you believe in what we're doing, if you want to help us win souls, if you want to join hands with us and you want to join our army of supporters from around the world, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate for one-time gifts or davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly ministry supporter. Help us continue to reach people all around the world. And remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.